I know this says try, but we're going to try another completing the square just so that we get very, very comfortable with different types of situations we might come across. I'm going to keep the quadratic and the linear term together on one side of the equation along with a little space for me to complete the square. And I'm going to subtract one from both sides, get the constant on the opposite side. Half of six is three and three squared is nine. Adding nine to the left-hand side means I need to add nine to the right-hand side of the equation. That leaves me x minus three quantity squared equals eight. From here, we're going to square root both sides, giving us x minus three is equal to plus or minus two times the square root of two. We'll add three to both sides and I get three plus or minus two times the square root of two, but preferably three plus two times the square root of two and three minus two times the square root of two. So we've gotten about three examples of completing the square. There are problems when we have to complete the square and the leading coefficient is not a one, which means we do have to take care of that before we actually complete the square. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the negative eight to the opposite side of the equation. So I'm going to add eight to both sides. And before I can leave room and complete the square, I need to factor out that two. So I need to factor the lead coefficient from the left side of the equation. So the lead coefficient is that two right there. So I'm gonna factor that out. X squared minus eight X. Now I'm going to put a plus sign with the parentheses equals eight. And of course, whatever we add on the right hand, left hand side, we have to add on the right hand side. Now half of eight is four, four squared is 16. So we might wanna go right over to the right hand side and add 16, but that 16 is connected by the distributive property to the two that is factored outside of these parentheses. So we're not really adding 16, we're adding 32. So we need to make sure that we represent that properly and add 32 on the right hand side of the equation. Now when I factor two times the quantity, x minus four quantity squared is equal to eight plus 32 is 40. We still have, I'm gonna use some highlighters here. We still have the four dropping into place. So we have x minus four quantity squared. However, the only thing that was different was this two times 16, which is 32. So we add that to both sides. We've added it on the left by putting 16 inside the parentheses with that outside of two and we're going to represent it with a 32 on the right hand side of the equation. Now I can divide both sides by two and we get x minus four quantity squared equals 20. I square root both sides. x minus four equals plus or minus 
2 times the square root of 5. So the square root of 20 is 2 times the square root of 5. Add 4 to both sides, and we get x equals 4 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5. And that's, that's our two answers. So let's see if you can try this one. 5x squared plus 20x plus 6. We're going to try to complete the square, factoring out that 5. If you need another example, continue to watch along. I have 5x squared plus 20x equals negative 6. I'm going to factor out the leading coefficient of 5. After I do that, I'm going to leave some room to complete the square. And then make sure I put a plus with the blank on the opposite side. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. However, we're really multiplying 4 times 5, so we've really added 20 on the left-hand side. We're going to add 20 on the right-hand side. When we factor that, x plus 2 quantity squared is equal to 14. We're going to divide both sides by 5. And now we need to square root both sides. Leaving us x plus 2 on the left-hand side equals the square root of 14 over the square root of 5. Now before I do anything with the adding or subtracting 2 to both sides, I'm going to rationalize the denominator. So I get the square root of 70 over 5. We always want to show that rational denominator. I subtract 2 from both sides. Don't forget my plus or minus. And I get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 70 all over 5. So hopefully you got those examples and you're feeling pretty confident about them. We're going to try one more and this one is a true try in which the answer will just be displayed. So make sure you're pressing pause to try this problem and then press play to check your work. And our answer is x equals 5 fourths plus or minus the square root of 33 over 4. And I found that answer. In fact, I'm going to move that answer over here so that we can see the answer and all the work. So there's all of our work along with the answer.